Good day to you all. Welcome to Bodhisattva YouTube channel. Uh, we're here again to discuss another topic. Uh, we're going to continue today to discuss the topic of the calendar for world union and inspiration amongst us. And we're going to bring up something else as we go. So it's an honor to be here with all of the world. And that is the intentions for this video that it reaches everybody, every man, woman, and child upon our planet, and that we find a greater union in our world today, in our connecti connectivity and our focus and our purpose forward, that we find a greater meaning to uh, what production means amongst us and what economics truly is within our communities and our world community. So welcome, welcome to Bodhisattva YouTube channel. My name is Om Gyan Dharam. It's a pleasure to be addressing the world today. I'm very, very grateful and thankful to be able to be here on this channel, putting it out there to speak with all of you. And may this prayer, this dream, this divination come true. And may you help me do so by subscribing and sharing. Please do so. Help this get out there. So uh, we've been talking previously about um, the calendar, we, and we've, we've talked a, a little bit about that and how we can be contemplating how this can uh, bring us together and bring us to a greater union. And it's a very, very exciting topic because it does bring us into our entire history together upon our planet. And it brings up uh, many insights, uh, many many uh, revelations and uh, many, many questions, many considerations. So what uh, we've been talking about in the previous videos, which I will invite you to watch because it does um, help you gain insight into the video that's current and, and what we've been discussing, uh, inviting you to watch those. We now want to consider the possibility that we will together create a new calendar, that we will allow the time that has been behind us to be behind us, and that we will create a new calendar um, that is more in alignment with our moon cycle, our solar, our solar cycle, and a galactic cycle within a universe. And that we'll be creating that new calendar together and starting it fresh <laughs> from zero. So it's uh, quite a big topic, and I pray that this topic, I dream that this topic spreads throughout the world and that organizations form and that the documentations are created, that we can start to bring this up within our social platforms and our governments and create a movement towards it so it will be so. So uh, in creating... Uh, a new calendar we create a new beginning and by bringing it into alignment with the present time the, the present alignment of our moon and planet and sun within our solar and galactic rotations then we will be able to map and monitor in real time all of those things that are taking place around that on the planet we are on and around us in the surrounding planets and galaxies so we will be able to live in the flow on real time and in alignment in accuracy with all of this rotations with all of those rotations and spinnings within a galactic movement so this is uh Something that is not largely uh, discussed or talked about, but in our growing sciences and our growing technologies, it's coming to a point where it will benefit us to be in that alignment on a daily basis, allowing it to be a, um, an observation and a daily topic within our movement in towards true production and economy in a seasonal cycle upon our planet. So there's a lot being said there, and that alone brings us into great contemplation, uh, let alone the, the topics such as uh, technology and calendars and uh, yeah, moon cycles and 
sun cycles and so on. So that that is uh, largely about what this video is today, is to reinforce the last videos and to talk more about the calendar and why we should begin a new one and why we should start at zero and the potential that this brings to us as a world community and a world union. So the next topic that uh, would like to be discussed today, that would like to be brought forward, is flags. There's a lot of flags in the world and these flags have history behind them just as, our cal just as our calendar and the many calendars that other cultures have moved through throughout our human history. So flags today um, could be another form of union, another way of inspiring a great union upon our planet and a new relationship with each other and the, the other species we share our planet with and our planet itself bringing us back to a larger memory of abundance and right relationship among the plants and animals and environments we live in. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is uh, David At Attenberg's life and his work that he has done for us in our very recent history and the BBC channels and all the great videos to do with mother nature and even our own species and how our species has related to our planet and the environments that we live in in the last brief century a uh, hundred hundred years or so so uh, it's a great reference to be present with the changes that have taken place in the last 40 years with our world environments, Mother Nature, and our view of production and how we've moved forward upon our planet. It is a really good, honest reference. And it has only gotten better in the uh, past decade with uh, his efforts and his collaboration, the efforts that others have helped him bring this, this with these wonderful documentaries and informative documentaries forward for, to help us with a more practical and present world view. It's very important that when we're thinking about each other on a world view that we're very present with where we are today and that we're practical with where we are today and how it looks moving forward. So resources are a big part of it and not that we want to think in lack but we want to think in how these resources can be used appropriately for a productive manner amongst all of us for all of our well-being and our future well-being the next seven generations so i would like to talk about a wonderful indigenous story of creation that deeply touches my heart and relates to Mother Earth. So, in indigenous teachings and even in yogic teachings, sounds, they're, they're very connect, connected through time, time and space. Sound is very important to us. Sound is creation. Creation is sound. The definition of existence is vibration. So, it's very important our voice boxes, the words we speak, the prayers, the dreams, how we divinate. It's very important that we are speaking from a aligned, connected source within ourselves and to creation. All the other species, the environments we live in, and the universe that we are existing within. So the, the telling story is a very powerful way to connect and align and find union together and telling good story, telling story that we feel connection to, not only ourselves, but together. So it has been said that 
we live upon Turtle Island. Now, some reference this to North America, and some reference this to different parts of North America, some reference this to the whole planet, and I'm really feeling to reference it to the whole planet. That we live, we can consider that we live on a cosmic turtle within a cosmic ocean, within a universe. So this is our, our turtle that we all live upon, that we travel through the ocean. This is our island that we travel through the cosmos upon. And we share it as one people. Throughout history, there has been many proverbs, prophecies that have talked about a great union upon our planet, a great union as a species. And this is a good story, a good vibration of creation to share at this time. So we live on this turtle that is swimming through our cosmos. We live upon a mother earth, a turtle island. And we share this together. This can inspire us not only to connect greater to our mother and mother nature and the environments that we live in abundance with and learn from, but also to inspire a greater union in memory of our past, moving forward in the world we live today. So may all the countries, may all the leaders, may you see this video and may you become a little less cynical of how the world is running today and what is possible. May you break out of the boxes. May you break out of your framework of limitations and whys and think of possibilities. How you yourself can be inspired and how you yourself can learn to inspire others and how a true form of economics in terms of our indigenous relationships can form upon Mother Earth again in right relationship today. And how true abundance can be experienced as a species in a greater union in seasonal cycles around the world today. So let us drop all of our flags and let us become one turtle island, one cosmic turtle swimming in a universal ocean, a planet that we share together and that we understand that we are one species working together upon without borders. So may you consider that and may you consider starting that inspiration as leaders yourselves because we are consciousness and there are more people being born into the world and more people leaving the world and we need a good story, a good story that aligns us as a people that doesn't create separation. And all there's much going on in the world today and it is all very old and stagnant and stale. And it is not a very good story and it does not inspire very well. And this is the truth. And summer, summertime, we're in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm not so sure about the Southern Hemisphere, but summertime shows those colors so clearly. It shows the patterns and the repetition and the struggles and the frustrations. And that really comes to the surface in that bright hot sun, that illumination. So summertime you get the time to really integrate life and and whether you slow down or speeding up, it's more prevalent. It can be seen very clearly. So we need inspiration. 
leaders need to learn from the indigenous to tell a good story that inspires the world and that inspires unity and that inspires connection and a better understanding of environments and the true meaning of economics and abundance. Economics has nothing to do with a few families controlling huge corporations trying to create the abundance themselves and feed the world. It's a big headache that nobody needs. And those of them, those of the people that are trying to establish that type of, that type of world, that's all it is for you is a big headache as well. And it has a lot of dysfunction and it doesn't work very well. So a better story needs to be told and a story of planting seeds, a story of giving and sharing seeds, a story of learning how to grow seeds and learning of each new being that grows before you and how it can be harvested and how it creates abundance and what it creates through the skills you develop in your relationship with it. There are many indigenous teachings and they, they talk about seeds being the teachers and seeds being the giver of abundance, the mother earth being the giver of abundance when we give back. And that's what we have to learn to do is we have to learn to give back. We have to learn to give back to our children, to each other. We're all children and we're all seeds. And that's where true power is, and that power grows when it is shared. That good story, that good relationship, that is real. So this is the furthest thing from making money. That's not where true production and true economics and economy lies. That's not where the fruit is. That is what has been going on and continuing. And if that is the medium we need to use to get there, well, we need to make a lot of changes because it's, uh, well, it needs help. <laughs> so you are the help, I am the help, and the seeds are our help. And these are just ideas that you can share. This is youth, this is Bodhisattva YouTube. And this is about a golden age that we've already arrived at and the veils are fading. And it is by our love that those veils fade and the memory comes back of what is important to us as human beings within our hearts and our souls, our spirit, what lifts our spirit and helps us rise to work together, to drop our borders and flags and to create new ones. So may all flags become a turtle. If we need to have an expression of our own culture, may we have a flag that has a turtle unique to our feeling, to our, to our lands. Just a suggestion, a topic, a conversation to have a good time with, to create better stories amongst us and connection. So the calendars can start again. This is, this is important because uh, our calendars do not help a world unity, a worldwide culture understand the simple time and space of our moon and our planet around our sun and our sun around our galaxy. They just don't, and they're confusing. And if you start looking into astronomy and then looking at our current calendars, you start wondering about things and just know that there's a lot more to be remembered. <laughs> so a devotion to divination I'll explain divination a little bit. A devotion to divination, a devotion to prayer, a devotion to the dream. These terms can come from different cultures and different perspectives of spirit. But that is it. It is in relationship 
to eternal life. It is in relationship to a intrinsic flow of life, a circle of life. And there is no control in this. And this is very important for us to understand as human beings. If you are searching for a spirit, you are searching for a child within yourself. And you need to find that child. All human beings with too much pressure that think they are in control or need to have control or have control, lighten up. You need to go out and rest and relax and sleep on a beach, do whatever you need to do. Connect with other human beings, Mother Nature, the moon, the sun, the water, a fire, a ceremony, a plant. Slow yourself down and connect. Allow your mind to become less cynical. Allow your perception to be malleable. Allow yourself to dream like a child. Remember what feels good to you and important. And not on a survival level, but simply a joyful level. And you will be getting closer to yourself and a place where you're able to actually inspire and help others. So speak well and may your words bring light out of others, bring hope to others. May your endeavors bring abundance to others and yourself. May our considerations allow us to dream of these things, open doors, open windows, open hearts. May we all see the way out of our own boxes and each other's and allow constructive conversation illumination to take heed and make change. So in the previous videos, we spoke of a golden age and we've I've mentioned it here. This is a golden embryo. We are the golden embryo. The world today and every person here on this planet, we are part of an embryo forming, an energy forming, a golden embryo that is bringing forth a golden age, a better future for future generations, a more cohesive and connected generation to Mother Earth and the cosmos in a greater reverence and awe and love for life. This is how our media should sound. Consider that if you work in the media, this is how it should sound. It should sound of good creative story in connection and alignment with the actual creation that we live upon. It should sound hopeful for all people, full of truth in light of creation and its abundance and what it can offer us. So I do want to do a question and answer here on Bodhisattva YouTube channel about our world today. And for that, I need your subscriptions, not many. So I can go live and we can have more of a question and answer as others wish to call in or connect online and ask questions by text, anything like that. Um, interviews, so on and so on. I would like to go live. So I need your help to do so. So please subscribe and share. Please share. And I'm very grateful for your energy that you're bringing forth and support. 
truly inspires me and what keeps my heart opening and our world thriving. Our technology came about for a reason and I really believe that that reason is for a stronger cohesive union in communication with one another in right relationship. What else is coming up for me today in this inspiration for new ideas upon our planet in terms of abundance since we are using money as a medium to find one another in our seasonal cycles and the true meaning of economy and abundance is um, the financial wealth upon our planet needs to be distributed more evenly. So back to our indigenous who kept such a incredible balance of life, all aspects of life within their relationships to their, to their environment and a good health within their environment and upon the earth for such long periods of times in relationships with seeds, plants, animals, stars, space, and so on, is giving back to the tribe. So I would like to suggest the consideration of a completely transparent system worldwide in terms of our monetary exchange, our, our money, our, what we value as a good medium for trade and exchange, is that this becomes completely transparent. Our maturity level is rising in relationship to our past and who we are as a people today and where we're going in our future. Our maturity level is rising as a human species and a consciousness inhabiting a planet. And we can take it a step further now. So the idea I would like all the world to consider every human being, man, woman, and child, is a completely transparent system where we all can see what each other has and what each other's spending on. And this may seem scary, but it's actually going to liberate all of us because as you become more of yourself, you will be less and less scared of what, else, what anybody else thinks. And as you become more empowered and helped out by your surrounding communities, you will have less and less fear of any indifference or any cultural misunderstandings. And please believe me in that. It, it, uh, this world has so much information. We are such sensitive souls. And there is so much within us from past, maybe even other lives, if you consider that that there's a lot for us to expand into. And we need each other's support for that. We can all do it in a healthy way without uh, stepping on each other's boundaries or belief systems or any such thing, just simply growing as human beings throughout the time we have together. So there is no reason for fear and this transparency will actually help us in that direction in a very strong way. It will also help us understand where some of us or many of us may be stuck and where energy may be stuck and where it needs to move and flow more greatly. So what I'm saying about that is accumulated wealth that really isn't doing much for us in terms of our real abundance, our food production, and our shelters, our home systems, and how we support one another, and the potential that each of us hold as individuals to help out the group in that movement. So, and that goes into artists, healers, all of our daily, uh, day, more mundane daily functions that we all need to contribute to, um, our 
more exciting avenues of education and um and this could be personalized to me so try not to take any offense and just live your love um in terms of technologies and uh growing potentials in that direction that are uh more harmonious har harmonious and that in 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 that being more advanced less pollution yada yada so in all of our avenues forward this can help spread out that resource that medium that is to help us find a greater unity and a greater understanding of ourselves and each other and our direction our history our path and our direction forward it's a great awakening so the transparent system the one major function that it should have is that at the end of every annual year, since that's kind of how we work today in most countries, is that there's a seasonal cycle and then there's taxes and yada yada. So at the end of every annual year, there is a money cap. So this isn't limiting anybody's potential in terms of financial wealth or what they can and can't make. Everything can move forward as it is. It's simply putting a cap on what your net earnings are, what your possible profits are at the end of every year. So you can make $5 billion, but at the end of, end of every year, every human on earth can only keep a maximum of $100,000 and the rest gets funneled back in to their main community that they live in and the surrounding communities, depending on what they're involved in and how far that the, the stretch is in terms of what um, what's bringing the wealth in. All right, so this roots out corruption and uh, dishonesty with the transparency and supports the whole function of the entire species as a collective to live more honestly together and in a greater form, a, a greater truth of economics and how we create that abundance on a seasonal cycle. So economics is truly us. And we need to do that in a more integral way. Ec economics are seeds. Economics are food. The abundance that we create from the different types of growth and fibers and oils and so on and so on. That is economics and it is all empowered by people in many different ways. And that needs to be honored. So much is taken from those who put in a lot of the footwork. Honor is I must in our future and our unity. As such ideas come forward, we will find ourselves with more free time, more free headspace. More time to just be. And this might seem a little unsettling at first, but that is good for us as a species. That is a good direction. And as we move in that direction, we'll find a great vast of creativity. And that creativity needs to feel the support of a greater union and a greater abundance that we create together. And this is why it is so important that we do not live in a lack mentality and that we do not live in a fearful mentality where we believe there is not enough. Because there is more than enough on this planet annually and seasonal, seasonally for all of us to have the shelter we need and the food we need 
and to help us create more of it so there's excess through the simple process of education, giving, and sharing. So if our education and our systems aren't creating a greater abundance, they are out of alignment with who we are as a species and how to live on a planet, period. That is an arrow of truth. If there are more, more and more wars and more and more starvations and things going on like this, then there is not a leadership that is speaking a good story. There is not a leadership that is inspiring creation and connection and alignment of a union on a greater planet. None of that is happening if there is a belief that there is a lack of abundance or, or a lack of ability to be here on our planet together in a good way within our environments and for the other species and for future generations. So consider that and think about that. You must have a vision yourself that sees all of that as possible for a true economy in right relationship to exist. We are the economy. The seeds we plant, the foods we grow, and what we create. That is economy and true production. Continuing industries that build over the entire planet, that build over top of every river and natural field and create these huge concrete utopias and yada yada. That is not real production. A little bit of that for common places of energy sources and stuff like that as we progress more intelligently for free energy and um, more useful sources of energy that are more harmonious with our environment, our journey together through that brings us to the realization of what is needed, not more of the same. And industries that want to progress negatively amongst us in that same perception of lack to try to create balance are no good either. All right, that is never going to bring us to a conscious state and awareness of what true production and economy are and get us working together in a more unified and inspired way in connection and alignment with our planet and solar system and universe. It just, galaxy and universe. It just doesn't create the inspiration needed for the human spirit, the human mind, body, and heart to move in a direction towards that unity. It continues a pattern in dysfunction that isn't what we want or doesn't work for us. So very important, very important we focus, if we want to speak about focus and intention and keeping on a path of right relationship, a continuing awakening, forming a golden embryo of energy that creates a golden age and a brighter future for the next generations, then we must consider much. There is much to consider and there is much to change. In 2022, just seems like a magic year to me. It really does. It seems like a year that is pointing in all directions for us. And if that we maintain a healthy focus to a greater union, that it doesn't matter what direction we go, all directions are going to lead into a greater form of unity and understanding. And all we have to do is maintain that story. So it is up to all of us now to speak well, to come up with good solutions, to see one another, to find compassion, tolerance, to be there for one another, to help this abundance rise. This is the year of our rising for humanity.
a real story in alignment with our species and creation comes forth and we turn the tides and a new direction takes off. So that is my blessing. That is my dream. This is the prayer that comes forward for right relationship, for greater union, for unity, for one species, one human species, to begin a new calendar, to raise new flags, if that's necessary, and create a marvelous, harmonious humanity that we can only imagine today. So thank you for listening, Bodhisattva YouTube channel. I will be out here speaking again, addressing the world. And please do continue to open my heart with your energy. Please share, subscribe, write, whatever you feel your calling is. Thank you very much. You have a beautiful evening. All prayers, all relations.